You are listening to the Nat Turner Library Radio Network. If you are offended by black people discussing our suffering, black people discussing our struggle, and black people talking about solutions to our problems, then this show is not for you. You have been warned. Nat Turner Library Radio. Show and you get to see all the shows we've done way back to 
when our founder, Baba Khalifa, first started this show way back in 2009, 2010, and the many, many guests we've had, such as uh, uh, former Congresswoman Dr. Cynthia McKinney, to many, many ministers in the Nation of Islam, to brothers and sisters from the Black Panther family, to uh, different movements, different political affiliations, dealing with all types of subjects with the mind of black people as well as the finances, as well as the indigenous family as well. You get to enjoy those also on YouTube by simply typing in Nat Turner Library Radio Show. And uh, first subscribe, well, log into your YouTube page and subscribe to the Nat Turner Library Radio Show. Uh, you can also catch us on Facebook by simply typing in, in the search engine, Nat Turner Library Radio. Made it easy for you, brothers and sisters. You go to Instagram. Also type in, in the search box, Nat Turner Library Radio. Uh, follow the page. And on Twitter, type in NTLR-Radio. That's NTLR-Radio. These are the many methods you can follow us. Our primary mode of getting information to and from the brothers and sisters who are listening to the show, brothers and sisters, you can follow us with the news that will be forthcoming and all of the news. We'd like to post it before the show. And uh, so we can discuss it with our news specialist, Sister Tangela Muhammad. She will be discussing the uh, news, and each article will be posted on the Nat Turner Library Radio page. Uh, first, of course, like the page so you can get notifications about what we're doing, where we're at. As oftentimes we show up at events up and down the coast uh, when available. And uh, you can also come and support me by going to the website, bromichaelmohammed.com. That's B-R-O-M-I-C-H-A-E-L-M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D.com. <clears throat> You'll see myself, a description of my authorship. I am the author of a book by the name of Checkmate, The War for the Black Mind, Part 1. I am working on Part 2, and there's two other books after that. And... Um, Brothers and sisters, uh, as I said uh, before, you are listening to Season 3 of the Nat Turner Library Radio Show. Uh, this day, January 31st, 2019, please bear with me, brothers and sisters. I am getting over some sort of viral cold. Uh, I've been battling it. You know, when you deal with the public, uh, you get sick and you get ill, so I've been taking all the natural remedies. They've been working. So if you do uh, hear some phlegm or anything, please forgive me. Please excuse me this evening. Brothers and sisters, again, our guest tonight, tonight's subject is the true Hebrew Israelites. Uh, who are the real Semites, the true African Hebrews revealed? Uh, our guest tonight is Brother Mikael, the saint and elder here in Atlanta. He's going to give us an insight on the true history of the Hebrew Israelite. Uh, he'll also share the loving history between us and the nation of Islam and the Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters. This is important, brothers and sisters, because if you've been following the show for the last uh, year, you will see that I've read many a government document from the United States government stemming from the, the 40s, 50s, and particularly in the late 70s and 80s. They have a national security mandate to cause disunity in the black community, including in your home. This is important to understand, brothers and sisters, because we don't understand the implications of not being involved in relationships with one another. And so this subject tonight is to uh, counteract what has been going on. The enemy has been taking every little preacher, every little politician, every little business person that has any color to themselves. And they want them to denounce the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and ultimately anybody who's critical of them. How sick is that? And so they have taken everyone from Sister Angela Davis, and they said she's anti-Semitic, to uh, putting pressure on little old politicians and Representative Al Green in Houston, Texas, to pastors and preachers we never even heard of, all calling, you know they're speaking the same terms of the Jew because they're using terms that the Jew used, like bigot. Nobody knows what that means. The word bigot means someone who is unwielding in their racial uh, rhetoric, if you would. 
and unreasonable to compromise. Well, that's not the nation of Islam. The Honorable Miss Louis Farrakhan has always said, and more recently said, look, if you can prove that I'm an anti-Semite or I'm a hate teacher, do us do it in a public forum. So the people, they refuse to do that because they're cowards. They just want the teacher and guide that we have, the Honorable Miss Louis Farrakhan, to capitulate. They don't want anyone to talk with anyone. So along with that subject, we want to get straight to the root of what the term Semite is, what the true history of our brothers and sisters in the Israel, Hebrew Israelite community is. Uh, a great, great place. Uh, support brothers and si- support the brothers and sisters of the Hebrew Israelite by going to one of the two restaurants, Soul Vegetarian Number 2 at 652 North Highland Avenue in Atlanta. It's a vegan restaurant. Good food. I love their kale bone, which is uh, wheat gluten. It's not made with kale, believe us. It's just wheat gluten. I don't know why it's called kale bone. I think that's the term that's used. Uh, sometimes it's also known as sitin, but it is a very nutrient, protein-rich, wheat, gluten-based product. Uh, they have uh, other sides that are delicious, uh, such as their cauliflower. Um, I enjoy their food. Their food is made with love. It's healthy. Um, they're always packed, especially on the weekend. So, brothers and sisters, be prepared to... Uh, Enjoy some good food. Uh, Brother Mikhail is an employee, employment uh, there. And uh, brothers and sisters, again, uh, you can also support them at uh, over in East, uh, excuse me, over at West End. Uh, they, that's uh, Soul Vegetarian, number one. Very popular restaurant in the black side of town, as they say, or the black conscious side of town. Soul Vegetarian, number one. Uh, brothers and sisters, you can also support the um, Nat Turner Library family uh, by going to uh, easylightsources.org and khabooks.com. Easylightsources.org is a website that's by our sister, daughter of the founder, Elder Baba Khalifa, Sister Nadira Khalifa, who is a resident uh, here at the Nat Turner family, health expert. Sister has been to the United Nations to partake on health or related subjects. She's also doing research on health related things. May Allah continue to bless her. Uh, if you're in Atlanta, you can support the Blue Sea store at 890 uh, Joseph E. Boone Boulevard in Atlanta, 30314. Student Minister Abdul Sharif Mohammed, my local minister, is part owner of that. You can also support Sage Juice Bar at 3255 Pleasant Hill Road in Duluth, Georgia. Phone number there is 404-330-8818. Dr. Ridgely Mumin Muhammad, uh, wonderful man who was a guest a few months ago of the Nat Turner Library radio show, asked that uh, we all support the three-year economic program. This is designed to give non-GMO food to black people. This is not just a Nation of Islam thing. You can learn more about Muhammad Farms and uh, find ways to send your money directly to Muhammad Farms so supporting. He said, uh, Dr. Ridgely said many months ago, the best way to support the farm is not to come down and offer help. He appreciates the offer, but it's more hassle than anything because it's not really a place for believers to stay or people to stay to help. He said, so if you can make donations, you can hire local people so it's not such a hassle. But you can do all of this at MuhammadFarms.com. Find out how to do it there. And uh, you can also listen to one of our uh, Premier guest, Dr. Ava Muhammad, who also has a show, 7 p.m. Central Time, is also the same time of this show. You can also listen there, Elevated Places. And uh, brothers and sisters, again, you are listening to the Nat Turner Library Radio Show. Before we get to the news segment, I wanted to mention to you what the history of the Nat Turner Library Radio Show is, just so you understand why is it called Nat Turner Library Radio Show. Well, many years ago, uh, the founder, Elder Baba um, Halif, Khalif Khalifa, had started the Nat Turner Library Radio with his dearly departed wife. May Allah be pleased with Arita Fard Khalifa. They had a vision of acquiring the property uh, near the Nat Turner Rebellion War tra- Trail. and have been there many times. It's a wonderful place. Uh, they started the library on there in commemoration of the knowledge acquisition. Uh, Baba Khalifa said his goal was to acquire every book ever published in, by black people in America, and he has a strong percentage of it. It has thousands of books in that library. Uh, If you wish to uh, visit the library, uh, please do so. 
And uh, you can get more information on the library at easylightsources.org or black-ebooks.com or khabooks.com. Uh, you can also uh, call in directly to uh, book tours uh, to Elder Baba Khalifa. And the way to do that uh, basically is you write down uh, this number. <clears throat> and let me find that number for you, brothers and sisters. Uh, that's going to be uh, 434-378. Two one four zero. That's four three four three seven eight two one four zero. Brothers and sisters, again, you're listening to the Nat Turner Library Radio Show, and coming up, uh, you know, we will have our new segment. Mr. Muhammad. Uh, yes. It's time for the news with Sister Tangela. And it is time for the news with Sister Tangela. Sister Tangela, are you there? Assalamu alaikum. Well, alaikum salam. Welcome to the season three of the Nat Turner Library Radio Show, Sister Tangela. Thank you for appearing uh, tonight. How are you feeling, Sister? Very well. Yourself? I'm doing fine. Start getting over another cold, you know. Uh, I know, I know. I feel like the native brothers and sisters did many, many years ago, Sister Tangela. You know, they. they I, I once read this report that. 75% of the indigenous population was wiped out because of disease and viruses that they were unfamiliar with right. when the white man went over there into South America and over here as well, just without even war, it was just disease. Sure. And so when I started school <laughs> and got into brown people, I've been getting these viruses left and right, so i got to build up my immune system. You sure do. Praise be. Well, I'm excited about season three, Sister Tantum. All right, so what we got in the black news today? All right, greetings, family. Uh, the first article uh, is from com. Dr. Gladys West, the black woman who invented GPS, gets honored by the U.S. Air Force at the Pentagon. Did you know that a black woman from Virginia was instrumental in creating a convenience we use every day and almost can't live without? Yes, indeed. Dr. Gladys West invented the GPS, or the Global Positioning System, has finally received the recognition she deserves by being inducted into the Air Force Space and Missile Pioneers Hall of Fame by the United States Air Force during a ceremony held at the... So kudos to Dr. West. He's still black folks. We have reinvented everything. We well, sure right. We invented... We, we are some intelligent people. And so, so let's get this straight. This is a system. Yes. And she did this a long time ago. Is that right, Sister Tenzin? Well, she began working at, at the Naval Service Warfare Center back in 1956. Warfare, okay. Yeah, so Warfare uh, Center. Uh, she um, actually invented it back in 1986. Published that, um, the, the actual a guide on how to get this thing started. started up. Oh, okay. So, so another another person who invented something for the military. Uh, from my understanding, the brother who invented the internet also did it for the military. Yes, uh, he sure did. That yeah, is. and and the also the cell phone. The brother who invented that did it for the military. Right, exactly. And uh, we know we saw the documentary or the docu movie uh, Hidden Figures. Colors, Hidden Figures, right? Figures, yes. And uh, Dave's sisters were doing it for NASA, which is a branch of the United States government. So the government knows the power of the black man and woman. Do we know our power? Right. And so what would we be without GPS today? Exactly, you're right. Where would the world be without I mean, GPS? Where would the world be without GPS? I mean, I can even imagine not having GPS. You know, it's the strangest thing you think about back when we did not have GPS. You know, back growing up in the country roads in the 50s, we didn't have GPS. We just... Knew where the roads were. Where the roads were. You just where to go. You know? Right. <laughs> That's how you found your way around. <laughs> well, in the last hour, Sister Tanta, over 140 people have looked at that article. So oh, it's beautiful. a very interesting thing. Yes. What else you got for us? Uh, the next article, 22-year-old will become the first black female nanoscientist in Virginia. Great things happen in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Her name is Janani Sebron. Hebron just made history as the first black woman to become a nanoscientist in the state of Virginia. All right. She's only 22 years old, and she will be getting her bachelor of science degree from Virginia Tech Nanoscience Program. Well, you know, um, 
the nanoscience, brothers and sisters, uh, if, for, for those who are not familiar, I had an opportunity to talk to a nanoscientist that works for special projects for the government uh, for my previous employer many years ago. And nanoscience, make a long story short, nano just basically means something that's extremely microscopic, but is a machine, okay? It's a manipulation of matter and the atomic, molecular, super molecular scale. So that picture this. They can build technology. Now, look at how smart this is, this is Tanner. Nanotechnology is technology on the nanoscale, which is atomic, molecular scale. Now, how wise, how intelligent, how, how knowledgeable of science would you have to be to make something in that, in that uh, realm? You know, you got to have extreme knowledge of, of that. So, so shout out to our sister. Uh, may Allah continue to uh, protect her. But we, there's something Dr. Ridgely told me years ago, Sister Tangela, he said, we got plenty of uh, black scientists in the field, but we don't have nothing for them to do. So they end up working for the enemy. So we got to find something and somebody to take the time and effort to make something for our people to do so the enemy stops taking our intelligentsia for themselves. Right, right. All right. Uh, the next article is from blackdoctor.org. Black woman owned company awarded to replace spent water pipes. Now, we all know about the, the tragic um, poisoning of this water there in Flint. Well, earlier in 2018, the federal magistrate approved a $97 million settlement. This order mandates that thousands of pipes made of lead and galvanized steel be replaced, a three-year project. But she also, um, the judge also awarded $250 million in earmarked to help resolve the man-made disaster. Well, the construction company named W.T. Stevens Construction has been awarded the contract to replace all the contaminated pipes. This, this company is a family-owned company that was founded by W.T. Stevens in the late 1990s. He passed away in 2002, and his daughter... Rhonda Greger and her seven siblings, siblings joined together to begin the work of continuing his legacy. So they would be the sole responsible for replacing all of the uh, lead pipes there in um, the Flint, Michigan area. Okay, all right. So uh, what's your comment on that? I think that it is only fair that we would have a black company to, uh, to be awarded this contract to replace those pipes. Uh, I, 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 I hope and pray that everything goes well, that they have no issues, because the, the people in Flint need to have clean water, Well, you know, and that's what they deserve. Well, you, you're sure right, Sister Tangela. I mean, you and I saw a documentary. Um, yeah, and brothers and sisters who are not familiar, the tragedy in Flint uh, is still going on. For those yeah, who don't quite know, on, yeah. the entire city of Flint, which is a mid-major city mm-hmm. in uh, an old state of Michigan, has been poisoned by lead pipes deliberately, lead, lead water, excuse me, deliberately, not by some neglectful act. They knew that they were poisoning. Yeah, that was Just like in uh, New Orleans, um, uh, Hurricane Katrina aftermath, it was the, um, uh, what, what did Spike Lee find out? Uh, it was the um, Army Corps of Engineers that deliberately blew up the levees. That's right, Sister Tangela for the sole purpose of offsetting the water pressure from the French Quarter, which is the white business quarter, and, and killing 2,000-plus black folk. Now, these tragedies, like the Flint, Michigan thing, can you picture over a million people having brain dysfunction? And it's still going on? See, the enemy has done such evil. They don't even know how to fix it. They just hope you be quiet about it. Or worse yet, Sister Tangela, they like to just kill us all. Exactly. Like I said, dozens of people have died, thousands of children and adults have been are ill now because of this. Right. And this thing is just, just, it can't even be, can be done. Yeah, it, there's really not much to say. Uh, you know, there's really not much that could be said to redeem themselves. No, it's not. The people who are uh, guilty of this should be in prison, if not yeah. killed, yeah. Uh, publicly. Uh, because there's no way you can take a child's brain and redevelop it. And they're not even trying to admit fault in that because of money, you know. The government of the United States particularly would be bankrupt. And our brother, Barack Obama, went over there just to mockingly 
say, oh, the water's fine. So they always take a Negro from amongst us and black folk, and they say, you, you keep, keep your people quiet. So they were hoping that our brother Barack Obama was going to keep the situation quiet, and he did absolutely nothing. So what they did instead, according to this documentary, when after Barack Obama left, a few weeks later, they had military exercises in Flint, Michigan, to intimidate the people. So that they won't be rising up and protesting. Look at the enemy. It's cheaper to do that. It's cheaper to kill them than it is to reparate them. And that's what the enemy has done for us as a, as a toy tire people. What else you got for us? Uh, the next article is from HIVplusmag.com. CDC, HIV rates in Atlanta now officially an epidemic. Health officials from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention announced that Atlanta remains in an HIV, HIV AIDS health crisis and ranks fourth in the nation for new HIV. HIV diagnosis. Lord have mercy. Yeah, honestly, downtown Atlanta is as bad as Zimbabwe and out of South, out of Africa. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Wow. That's how bad the HIV epidemic is in Atlanta. Really sad. Okay, good. And brother, brother Mikael, by the way, uh, uh, brother Mikael, I see you on on the line. I'll get to you uh, as soon as we're done with the news segment. Shalom to you and to the Hebrew Israelite family that are listening in. But yes, Sister Tanzer, what's your comment? You know, I, I know that we have a very huge LGBTQIA population in Atlanta. <laughs> um, but please, if, if that's the lifestyle you choose to live, please be careful. Please protect yourself. Mm. Those of you young men who are out here having unprotected sex with women, protect yourself if you're going to have sex. This this AIDS is going AIDS is going to have a a a face. Because anyone can be anyone can have AIDS and HIV. Anyone. Well, Sister Tanza, you're a merciful person. That's the true Mississippi woman in you. But you know, this is the Nat Turner Library Radio Show, so Brother Michael's going to speak the truth uh, as I see it. We all know that Dr. Robert Gallo, for those of us who study conspiracy, developed and created. Uh, the virus that was the precursor to HIV in Africa for the purpose of minimizing the population of black people. The government of the United States used this biological weapon on the gay community first in states like uh, California and New York. This is not the first disease that they've done this. Um, There's many, many books on it, such as Medical Apartheid, um, there's a book uh, by a Jewish guy who, who discovered this, and uh, uh, Dr. Levin, I think his name is, uh, who also uh, points this out. So when you look at Atlanta, Dr. Wesley Muhammad, um, I thank Allah for his uh, scholarship in this subject, Sister Tangela, because he's been pointing out for the last few years that Atlanta particularly has been a special CDC government project. Yes, um, and it's been inducing homosexuality through chemical uh, reactions. Now, this is not to offend anyone who struggles with homosexuality. We don't accept it because God don't accept it. But we know that there's an inducement that changes the physiology of the thinking of a person to make them homosexual. And so this is what the chemical isolation has been done in the water supply and in some of the chemical reactions that have been in the medicines in Atlanta. So we know that their fear, Sister Tangela, has been that the black man and woman in an, in Atlanta particularly, if they were to strengthen and rise up, they would lose the entire country. Because the biggest atrocities to black people have happened here in the South. And so rather than have black people rise up, in Atlanta or in the South, they rather neutralize it. And nothing makes you more weaker than making your hormones reverse and, ma- and making testosterone out of you. So nothing does that like the homosexuals. So one of the things about home, uh, about this AIDS, and I'll leave it alone, is that it's not an accident. It's not an accident. Yes, uh, promiscuous sex will do it, but, you know, as the minister said, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said many years ago, a law will aid you, hence the, hence the pun on the name, into doing the right thing. So if we take the the uh, the Torah, for example, this tells us what the punishment for uh, that kind of lifestyle is. 
and we look at we look at AIDS. If you're having sex with your wife, if you're a husband, and you're having sex with your husband the way you're supposed to, and not someone else, you don't have to worry about this. And so that's the truth. We have to look at it for what it is. Um, we're at a point now, brothers and sisters, if you are struggling with homosexuality, there is help for you. Some of you think that because Satan told you that it's okay, I'm talking about the news media, and then one of the articles you're going to read talks about it. Satan tells you your lifestyle's okay, you think God says that. Not the case. So, uh, what else do we have since Tim? Uh, the next article is from the roots.com. Black leaders must pass white approved purity tests that white leaders don't. Ask Angela Davis. I think we all heard the article about um, that black civil rights icon Angela Davis would not be honored by the civil rights Federation because she's too poor. poor. A, mu- a museum in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, a civil rights museum in Birmingham, Alabama, backtracked on supporting Angela Davis for a um, human rights. Um, Award, and the article, the article goes on to say that uh, if you need this controversy, there's a deeper problem with how too many white people view iconic black figures. If the black figure doesn't meet a particular white centric metric of acceptability, that black figure simply can't be worthy of being honored in any context in any way, no matter how much good they have done for fellow black people. And the sad thing about Angela Davis, because she was a vocal supporter <laughs> of the BDS movement that urged individuals competent owners to boycott Israel because of the country's repeated mm-hmm. documented human rights violations of the Palestinian people, right. that's why all of a sudden she was not able to receive this quote unquote award. That's right. Well speak the truth, Sister Tanzan. You speak know, and it's sad that simply because of something that's that simple. He can't have an award. Because the Israeli lobby, Southern Poverty Law Center, ADL, Nabrith, right. the ones that hijacked the idea of what the term Semite means, they hijacked it from the true meaning of the Semite. The ones who have a special covenant with Yahweh or Allah or God, um, they hijack that term and say that whatever they like is what is considered to be uh, something to be respected. Whatever they, whoever and whatever they don't like, is something to be hateful. Exactly. Because you and I didn't call Sister Angela Davis a hate teacher. No, we did not. You and I didn't call the Honorable Miss Lou Farrakhan a hate teacher. No. You and I didn't call our brother, may Allah be pleased with him, Rabbi uh, Ben Israel, Ben uh, uh, Ben Ami Ben Israel, a hate teacher. You and I didn't call the Hebrew Israelite a hate teacher. You and I didn't call the Black Panther Party a hate teacher. It's the Sephardic Kazarian Jew who calls all of us hate teachers because they don't like anyone who is not in their control and those of us that expose them. That's something that we have to understand, brothers and sisters. There's no compromise with Satan. You cannot compromise with Satan and his ways. This is why I love the Hebrew Israelite family. They don't compromise with wrong. You see what I'm saying? That's why I love them, because they're going to do the right thing because that's what the Torah tells them. You understand what I'm saying? And so we have to expose those people who call themselves Jews and are not. That's not Brother Michael's words. That's what the book of John in the New Testament of the Bible says, brothers and sisters that are listening. But you can call me what you like. I grew up around them bastards called uh, so-called Jews. So-called Jews. They are not that. They're just rich white folk who hijack a good faith, and they um, call themselves Semites, and they're not. So tonight we're going to talk about who the real Semites are. And what else you got for us? Uh, the next part is from WhyNetNews.com. Biden, U.S. leaders drove gay marriage changes. United States Vice President Joe Biden praising Jewish leaders for helping change America's attitude about gay marriage and other issues. Mm-hmm. Biden goes on to say that culture and arts change people's attitudes. He cited that social media and the old TV series Will and Grace are examples of what helped change attitudes on gay marriage. Mm. He said, think about all that. I bet 85% of those changes were, whether in the Hollywood or social media, are consequences of Jewish leaders in the industry. Mm-hmm. So he goes on to say that Jewish values are a central part of who Americans are. Mm. So say that one more time. Jewish values, he said? Jewish values are essential 
heart of who Americans are. Mm, so Joe Biden, so comment on that, Sister Tess. <laughs> you know, oh Joe, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to say about Joe. I don't know. We we see what it's clearly what his agenda is. Clearly, he's 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 on the Jewish bandwagon. So well, of course, they all are on the Jewish payroll. Yeah. You know, so to come out and say these things, it's obviously he has some type of of agenda there, as they say. So it, it doesn't doesn't surprise me at all. Well, you know, accidentally, brothers and sisters, these articles are on the Facebook page for Nat Turner Library Radio Show. And uh, uh, Brother Mikhail, we're going to get to you in just a moment. Let me just say, comment and say this. Uh, brothers and sisters, for those who don't understand what Tina Tanner just read, why Net News is a Jewish newspaper. This article is from 2013, in the height of the presidency. Prior to that, President Obama, under Jewish leadership, uh, uh, saw, um, uh, sanctioned, told black leaders they ought to accept homosexuals now. Okay? This is what he, the president, said because the Jews want to do it. The Jews also telling Joe Biden didn't expose them. He was actually commenting on it <clears throat> Excuse me, because his son, I believe, is a gay American. And his words were, you, single, you, the Jewish community, single-handedly changed the American view on homosexuality. They called this statement initially anti-Semitic. But he was just trying to be pro-Jew. So the point I made in putting this on tonight, we got to know who the real Semite is. And I have a real Semite that's coming on the show. Yes, sir. And so what's your comment you have on this article? So that was your comment, sister? Yeah, my comment is. Well, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, sister for uh, your, your news. We thank you for giving this news to black people. Ev, in season three, we're going to continue what we've been doing um, in season two. Brothers and sisters, uh, this is the Nat Turner Library Radio Show. Coming up, we got our brother, Mikael the Saint, the original Hebrew Israelite student, our brother, Rabbi. Then I meet Ben Israel. May Allah be pleased with him eternally for his great work in the world. Bring community together. Tonight's show, Who Are the Real Semites? True African people. Coming up. Caucasian 6,600 years ago? Ever wonder the connection between a black hole and the power of black women? Did you know that there is a mathematic connection between black people and the blackness of the universe? Want to know the true purpose of the women's liberation movement in the 60s and the original one that was in the late 1800s? What is the Louisiana Mississippi Syndrome? Again, that's the Louisiana Mississippi Syndrome. All of this and more in Checkmate, The War for the Black Mind, Part 1, the Black Woman. This is my first book, and this will not be the last. Go to the website, Bro Michael Muhammad. 
Com. That's B R O M I C H A E L M U H A M M A D dot com. You can also go to Facebook and type in Checkmate, the War for the Black Mind, and call me direct uh, if you would like to book any engagements or anything uh, dealing with Checkmate, the War for the Black Mind. 678 906 6306. 678 906 6306. This is your brother, Michael Muhammad, and that's Turner Library Radio. Stay tuned for Nat Turner Library Radio. Peace, you guys. It's Nadira right here from Easy Light Sources. And I just wanted to let you know that the Easy Light Sources Food Guide is now available for $10 on easylightsources.org. The Easy Light Sources Food Guide covers 18 fruits and vegetables commonly found in any grocery store. If you're looking for ways to feel better in your life and to raise your vibrations, one of the easiest ways to incorporate some light into your life is through the foods that you eat. If you're interested in going into a plant-based lifestyle, the food guide also has your back with a few essays in the back and a few recipes to help get you started. Once again, the Easy Light Sources food guide is now available. Purchase your copy today at easylightsources.org. It's your brother here, Michael Muhammad from Nat Turner Library Radio Show. Brothers and sisters, I have recently launched my new writing, Checkmate, The War for the Black Mind, a part one, which is dedicated to the study of the mind of the black woman and how our enemies have attacked the black woman to get to the ultimately the black community. But I also have a website, bromichaelmuhammad.com, B-R-O-M-I-C-H. A E L M U H A M M A D dot com. That's Bro Michael Muhammad dot com. On this, you will see me. You will see the M Six X Apparel, which has beautiful shirts, one hundred percent organic black shirt. For the sisters, we have the uh, Be Yourself, Love Yourself shirt. The shirt that says, I'm not a toy for a little boy, I need a man with a plan. And for our conscious sisters, modesty is loving yourself. Uh, When you disrespect women, you destroy the future for everyone. We have the shirts of 100% organic black, uh, which gives all the attributes of our organic black man and woman. We have honor thy mother and thy father. We have the 100% black God shirt, one of the most popular. We have the know your enemy shirt with the atrocities that have happened to the black man and woman of North America on the back. We also have the Checkmate uh, book cover shirt in many different colors. Uh, we also have fragrances are available. You just simply have to tell me which one you need. And these are all the things you can find on bromichaelmohammed.com. That's bromichaelmohammed.com. The website, you can go to it from your e-reader. You can go to it from your tablet. You can go to it from your PC. You can also reach me directly at michaelasia33 at gmail.com. It's M I C H A E L A S I A 33 at gmail.com. You may also call me direct at 678 906 6306. Peace. Back, brothers and sisters, you are listening to the Nat Turner Library Radio Show, Season 3. Tonight's show, who are the real Semites? True African Hebrews revealed. Tonight's guest, one of the original Hebrew Israelite students of uh, Rabbi Ben Ami Ben Israel. May Allah be pleased with him, a wonderful, wonderful leader of our people a leader of the world, uh, and uh, a brother who's sorely missed in this conscious movement that we have going on today. A lot of confusion, a lot of anger going between the groups. And if you've been following the Nat Turner Library radio show for any time, brothers and sisters, you know that here at the Nat Turner Library radio show, I, Brother Michael, um, when I spoke, said the same thing. I spoke at the a tribute to the Honorable Dr. Khalid Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with him, a few weeks ago. And I pointed out the National Security Council Memorandum, 
number 46, the National Security Council Memorandum number 46, uh, which is uh, presented at the archives of the Supreme Court of the United States. It was a memorandum sent by Zbigniew Brzezinski, the Secretary of Treasury, Commerce, Attorney General, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff to Secretary of Defense. And I want to quote the last uh, thing. They said, we must facilitate the greatest possible expansion of black business by granting government contracts and loans with favorable terms to black businessmen in order to uh, disunify them. And uh, we will promote and preserve a climate which inhibits the emergence within the black leadership of a person capable of exerting nationwide appeal and to impede ties between U.S. black organizations and radical groups in African states, fragmentation and lack of organizational unity within movements is imperative. The uh, CIA, this is their words, must have clandestine operations to generate mistrust and hostility in America and in the world and cause division among black African radical national groups and their leaders. This is your enemy, brothers and sisters. This is your enemy. And so without any further delay, I'm going to bring on a brother who I have uh, spoken to on a few occasions, a brother whose spirit is a true, true Hebrew, a true man of Yahweh, a true man of Allah, a true man of God, uh, my brother, Mikael the Saint. Welcome to the Nat Turner Library Radio Show, Brother Mikael. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing and allowing me to be a part of your presentation today. I appreciate it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, for those who don't know, now correct me if I'm wrong, hallelujah, an ancient term, means hail Yahweh. Is that right? Yes, and uh, in the Hebrew language, we say uh, all praise are due to Yahuwah. That's the pronunciation in the land from the land of Israel. From our, that's how we have uh, learned it from our uh, great master teacher, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Rabbi Ben Ami. Rabbi is the Hebrew pronunciation of Rabbi. Rabbi is the English pronunciation. Uh, but Rabbi Ben Rabbi. Ami is the actual. Yeah, it means my master, <clears throat> and Ben Ami okay. means uh, son of my people. Well, so that's, I just want to that's share wonderful the to know. history if, about how we left the country and 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 uh, became who we are. Um, Absolutely, 19, well, let's jump. Let's jump right in and do that. Let's go ahead. Yes, sir. Yeah, back in uh, 1965, um, there was a great. There were riots in California. Um, Brother Malcolm X was murdered by the FBI, and uh, a lot of stress going on in the black neighborhood around the country. Uh, our spiritual leader, ben Ami, was just a young brother, 26 years old. He began to wonder. He was concerned about what to do with his people, what to do with his, you know. Was, he was just studying the Hebrew culture a few years into it at that point. started like in 62. So he was like twi- in 1966. He was 26 years old, and uh, he was concerned. And one year, literally one year after Malcolm was executed by the FBI, he had a vision that a messenger came unto him. He heard some words. Some words came unto him. Uh, Brother ben was was uh, on his bed uh, thinking about what he had to do, how he could fix the situation with his people in the Creator, and uh, a message came to him. The message was that he had to be responsible for taking the, the children of Israel amongst the so-called African-American people, taking us out of America, through the wilderness, didn't know where that was at the time, and then from there on into on into uh, the promised land, Israel, to establish God's kingdom on earth. So that was the All vision right. he got. He said that, uh, he told us that it was about a 45-second vision. Mm. And this was February 20th, 1966. And for, wow. since you have a, such an astute show, uh, you know, Malcolm was, was uh, executed by the FBI in... February 21st, 1965. So it's about exactly a year after the execution of Malcolm X, El Haj Malik al Shabazz. So it's very vital to understand that the government figured that they had, you know, eliminated uh, this so called uh, Messiah image. Because I'm sure, because you mentioned NSC 46 earlier in the presentation, 
I'm sure you've let the audience know about, about the COINTELPRO presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. The COINTELPRO presentation is to prevent the rise of a messiah, someone who could unify and electrify the militant black nationalist movement. So at that time in Chicago, 66 was the time when the Panthers rose up also. And, and Malcolm is like the father of the Panthers in the spirit because, yes, you know, sir. they figured they had to do something. They they did what they had to do according to their understanding. According to our right. understanding, uh, our spiritual uh, teacher, Ben Ami, who was not the lead teacher of the movement at that time, he was just the one that had the vision, he began to share with the elders and other brothers and sisters and began to, and began to gave, uh, gather a following. Initially, the initial elders would not receive what he had to say about, you know, talking about leaving America and all that kind of stuff because we've been so such uh, – trained into slave-oriented Christianity, everybody looking for the sky to open up and somebody drop down with a parachute and save somebody. But that was never the plan of the creator of the heavens and the earth. So when they began to share the vision with the people that it's time to roll, and they began to study collectively, scriptures began to come to him, and, and, and he began to understand more clearly about the time frame of the Exodus. And we actually had to leave in 67, and the actual, the actual date was May 17th, 1967. That's when the first saints left and went on to Liberia. Okay. Out of Chicago. That's the actual initial date of our exodus out of this country. And then from there, we began to, uh, other saints began to leave. Approximately 400 saints left America on one-way tickets to the Bush of Liberia between 67 and 68. Getting into Liberia and... Uh, in Liberia, the rain, it rains almost half the year. So it's very hmm. wet, very green. A lot of bugs, you know, snakes running yeah, around. Yeah. It's, it's a special situation. So a lot of things was in shock coming out of Chicago in the snow with the sunshine and the snake, like, oh, shucks, what's up? Mosquitoes, you know, we had some challenges. But we were blessed. The indigenous Liberians helped us out, helped us figure it out. And even the government of Liberia assisted us at some point, President Tubman, they give us some assistance at at a point of our uh, we had some challenges. We got some help, and then, in light of our struggle, two thirds of the saints that entered into Liberia came back to America because it was too hard to deal with. Okay. It was too hard to deal with living in the bush. I mean, it wasn't no joke. You know, it wasn't wow. no joke. And uh, so, 1968 is critical because. That's the time when Dr. King made his last presentation to the people in the famous uh, speech that we always refer to as him referring to uh, he's not fearing any man and that we as people will get to the promised land. So right. that's essential right. for us because we were actually the ones to fulfill what he said. And by our Absolutely. works, we have made him into the – he has manifested himself in a prophetic realm because of what we have manifested through the leadership of uh, – uh, Rabbi Ben Ami, our, our uh, the founder Founded, of the yes, kingdom of, of of God at Jerusalem. So, yes, sir. in the um, uh, one so one third of the saints that that escaped to Liberia actually entered into the land of Israel, and they became the cornerstone of uh, the community in the land of Israel. But '68 was key because, like I say, um, when Dr. King made his last speech. April 4, 68, a few months later, uh, Rabbi Ben-Ami and uh, Prince Kiskiyahu actually left Liberia and went into Israel to fulfill what he said, that we as people get to the promise. And at that time, just those two, in the same image of Joshua and Caleb, two went on into the land and scout the land out. Uh, Rabbi Ben-Ami came back to Liberia, and he began to come to America to seek to gather financial support. For the saints, because we was we were struggling and didn't get much support, but we did yes, get sir. some support from uh, some people in the Christian community. Helped us out, hmm. you know. Helped us out. So you know, we we understand. You know, we got support from all walks of life in the black community. You know, you know. So we Absolutely. got some support, and he got he got uh, re-energized, and more saints began to leave America to fulfill the prophecy that. Some saints got to get up out of America, out of Babylon, you know, right. to fulfill their property that we got to get up out of here. So then in 1970, we actually set, established a government structure was established in the land of Israel. Yom Kippur season, that's in the fall season, 1970, the uh, 
Ben Ami, Ravi Ben Ami established the divine prince government, uh, princeship, uh, the royal governors of the kingdom set things in order on that level. The, the royal governance of the kingdom. So that's when it kicked off, and we've been we've been jamming ever since. We had some issues in the land of Israel, some challenges. Initially, right. when we got there, as the as the uh, 69 December, December 21st, when the saints got into Israel from Liberia, we were accepted, and we were given a place to stay and these kind of things because there was what we call the law of return. The law of return okay. said that if you say if you say that you are a Jew, uh, that you are of Israel, then they would accept you and give you and worship, worship the God of Israel, live by, live by the commandments in the scriptures, then you can come home to Israel and have a life. But once we got there, once we got there, uh, after the first 39, then some others started to come in, uh, things began to change a little bit. They started to say, well, oh. yeah, things started to shift. Things started to shift. Initially, it was it was one way, but... More saints came from North America, then it it changed a little bit. You know, they got they got scared. They got scared mm. because we were talking we were talking strong conversation. We the children of Israel, we come to setting up God's kingdom, and it shook them up a little bit. So we understand, right. you know, fear is relative. You know, they didn't know us, right. we didn't know them. But it took us about twenty years of struggle until the latter eighties. When we began to normalize relationships with the uh, with the government in the land of Israel. Prior to those, oh. between sixty nine and, uh, and 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 eighty nine, we had a, we had a variety of struggles. We've been deported, we've been jailed, we've been through all kinds of stuff. We, wow. we have a lot of history on that. Uh, there are two books in particular uh, we sell in, at the restaurant for vegetarian West End uh, in our bookstore. With two books in particular that deal with the history. One is called The Impregnable People by Prince Gabriel. It talks about the Exodus. The other one is called Ramla 7. Ramla 7 talks about the struggle in the mid-70s when we were being deported in Israel, and our only course of defense was to re, uh, um, turn our passports in, to renounce our American citizenship. I mean, there's a whole book about hmm. that. Seven of the brothers were wow. selected by Rabbi Ben Ami, who had the kind of courage to do that. But knowing that in doing that, he's going to jail. He's going to, hmm. and then they put us in a maximum security prison in, in Israel. Ramla, Ramla, no, well, it was the no. seven brother, Ramla seven, Ramla in Israel. All the terror, okay. so-called terrorists, and all that kind of stuff. They had us locked up for 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 a time. And uh, Prince Ram, who hmm. is in Atlanta right now, is one of those brothers in the book Ramla seven. He and he's available uh, to talk to, to interview. He come here and he teaches on the Shabbat one o'clock every week. He can come get that holy wisdom. Prince Ram left America in seventy one and went to Israel. Now, when we left, most of the saints, uh, when you, as, you, as you meet various saints in our community, most of us, when we left America, we left with the spirit of we on a one way ticket. We didn't leave in the spirit that we coming back. Even when I left in nineteen eighty, my first time out of America, I didn't leave with the spirit of I'm coming back. So Prince Ron left with that same spirit, 71, and uh, he'd been around the planet so many times doing the Creator's will, living in Ghana, you know, been governing Atlanta since 84, uh, you know, going back and forth to Israel to regenerate his his spirit. So we're doing this, and, um, you know, we're currently Hmm. uh, outside of the foundation in, in the Holy Land. We're also in Kenya. We're in Ghana. We're in South Africa, we're in Zimbabwe, we're in Guyana, South America, and we have some things happening in Belize, Central America, and we're doing th- we're doing the uh, the vegan consciousness because we understand that there's life in the food, you know. Life Absolutely. In the food. We're pushing that vegan consciousness for the people, and to uh, encourage our people to get into uh, understanding the power of nutrition and what it can do for you, you know. The ancients, as we study in the scriptures, the ancients lived 900 years. You know, Noah's right. 950 years. I mean, what kind of brother mm-hmm. is that? His son, Shem. Come on. We talked about the word Semite. It's really about Shem. Shem was the brother that name even come from. You know? Mm. Shem was okay. the brother. So I want to drop a quick piece. One of my brothers wrote a book called Sacred Truth. I want to share a quick piece about the word Semitic. 
real quick. Oh, okay, Good? yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. This is a book called Sacred Truth from Aleph to Tav by uh, Aidi HaKohen. It's about language through Hebraic thought. And on page 19 in particular, he talks about the Hebrew language. It says, Ivrit is a Semitic language of the Afro-Asiatic language family. And that's from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. The Afro-Asiatic language family. I want to mark that because... I know you spoke for me because the term Asiatic black man was a, is a cornerstone term in, uh, in, the, in the nation of Islam. Uh, in the nation of right. Islam uh, vernacular, right. because it, it, what in, in and in Hebrew, the word Asia is also a Hebrew term, right. which means created by Yah. Come on, so Asiya in Hebrew, created by yes, Yah. Sir. So it's a whole other thing going on. With the language of our people, he goes on to say, he says, modern Hebrew is spoken by more than 7 million people in Israel, and classical Hebrew is used for prayer or study in Jewish communities around the world. One of the official languages of Israel, along with Arabic. Hebrew is also spoken as a mother tongue by the Samaritans, though today fewer than 1,000 Samaritans remain. As a foreign language, Mm. it is studied mostly by Jews and students of Judaism and Israel. Archaeologists and linguists specializing in the Middle East and the civilizations by theologians and in Christian seminaries. So by us being back, the original man being back in Israel, we're taking it to another level. And that's that's our responsibility. We have a scholarship body in Israel. Uh, You may have heard of the Bible known as the uh, African Heritage Study Bible. You heard of that book before? I sure have, yes, sir. With Ken O'Feather as the editor. Yeah, Ken O'Feather, Dr. Ken O'Feather is the editor of that book. And uh, 22 of our scholars were set aside to help do the research for that production. That book is also oh, wow. on sale in our bookstore at the uh, Soul Vegetarian Restaurant in the West End. The African Heritage okay. Study Bible gives you an African Hebraic consciousness about the scriptures. Because, you know, um, we've been taught that all the so-called biblical characters are so-called Europeans. All of our lives have been taught that. But, right. you know, we're on the wake up. We're on the wake That's up right. all the way strong. Getting our land That's back. Right. In our language back, in our culture back, you know. That's and, right. Um, we've bridged the relationships in the land of Israel. Things are much better than they used to be. But we're still, we're vigilant. We've established relationships with all the people in the land of Israel, the Israelis, um, the African Palestinians. We've we've established great bonds in the land of Israel, and we encourage we all of those listening to get your passport. Get yeah. your passport. <laughs> And a That's passport, right. and, and, and for those of us who watch American TV sometime, you might have seen movies about the genie in a bottle. Yes. Well, the passport is a genie. you got to rub it, you got to pray on it, and you got to come see us and plan a trip to Israel, South Africa. We're around the planet. Come on, hang out with us. We'll feed you good, treat you good. You have a great time. We promise. Well, That's all we do. Well, I have some Eat questions. Great time. I got some questions. Yes, my brother. I have some I got questions for you. Well, well, first and foremost, let me thank you for so far. You've been giving me some information. I'm a student of life, and I'm a student of all Asiatic sciences. So you you have about 20 jewels that I can I can ask you about for the next 10 hours, but we don't have that long. <laughs> <laughs> so let me first thank you by. So I want to I want to promote that book. Uh, there was a couple. I put most of the books that you had mentioned on the Facebook page, brothers and sisters. So if you didn't catch them all, go to Facebook. Go to Nat Turner Library Radio uh, page, brothers and sisters, and like the page and go to today's show on January 31st, 2019, because uh, brother, um, brother, Mika, uh, brother Mikael, a lot of the people listen in in the next couple of weeks, you know, on our podcast. So so this, this we have people listening live, and then we got people that's going to be listening for the next few weeks and a few months. So uh, that's why I'm saying that. There was one book you had mentioned that I didn't get. Uh, it was Ramna 7. I believe yes, it's called Ramle how you Yes, Ramle 7, R-A-M-L-E. Ah, it's the maximum okay, security you. prison in the land of Israel. So that's what it's called, Ramle 7. Right, the book is entitled Ramle 7. Okay, got you. And okay. Prince Ram, right. who is the governor of the southern jurisdiction, he was actually one of the brothers in the, in prison. And uh, it's, it's a tell, whole testimony of seven brothers' testimony about what we experienced 
with the uh, U.S. Embassy, Israeli police, how they did us, locked us up. You know, they, they you know, we went through some stuff. Oh, the, okay, I see it now. I see it now. Um, uh, Shamaya um, Aliyah yeah, Team, yeah. I believe it is. Yeah. Okay, it's, mm-hmm. it's, That's her it's actually name. titled. Yeah, King. My, she's a, she yeah. wrote that book. Okay, so it's actually titled The Romla 7. Okay, got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah, there you go. The Romla 7. Got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. Okay, got gotcha. you. Okay, well, brothers and sisters, that's a, these are books. It's about $150 worth of books I'm going to have to go down to the uh, restaurant and get next week because yes, I need to have these you. books. It's important. Yes, sir. So I'll be happy to do yes, that. And uh, first and foremost, you had mentioned the restaurant, and I just want to promote again, brothers and sisters, if you're listening, visit. Uh, Soul Vegetarian Number One, Ten Atlanta. What's the exact address on West End? Eight seven nine Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard. Okay, and West End uh, Soul Vegetarian Three zero three one zero. Number two is six five two North Highland. Okay. All right. Now I want to ask a couple of questions, and this is for sure. ed- ed- educational purpose for myself and the audience. You had mentioned several things. I'm gonna I'm gonna be short on the question because I want you to tell me as much as you can. the The community that you have um, in the in the state known as Israel, you had mentioned the struggles in the book uh, that's outlined in the book Ramla Seven. Um, yes. I got a recent article that I posted today, and we've talked about this on our show before, where the Africans over there in Israel are actually being pushed out of Israel and they're actually being paid to do so or or risk going to jail. There's several news sources that are quoting this. Has any of that in recent years, uh in recent months if you would, affected the Hebrew Israelite community over there? I do not have an answer for that. But I do know that we're involved in that because we have an alliance with all the African uh, embassies in the land of Israel. But I can't give okay. a direct response outside of that reality. We 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 have relationship with the people on the diplomatic level and at the street level. Gotcha. But I, I can't gotcha. answer outside of that. I don't know response. Well, well, I said, the only reason I asked that question, and th- thank you for that response. I, I understand what you mean. Um, this was in January 26th of 2018. It says. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is from the Atlanta Black Star, and I put this on the Facebook page for people to see earlier. Israel's okay. offering citizens cold hard cash. There's a new program where uh, it's called the Israel Population and Immigration Authority. Uh, is offering um, eight thousand six hundred dollars uh, to get Africans, particularly, out of the state known as Israel, and. Um, you know, they're, they're claiming it's only for immigrants coming from, you know, Ethiopia and places like that that are there illegally. Uh-huh. But based on what you're saying, now we know the the Ethiopian brothers and sisters are the Falasha Jew, and yeah, their they're original, Jews. absolutely, and and their original uh, Hebrews as well. So yeah. if they're if they're making their uh, sojourn to their homeland to claim what what is exactly what the a uh, European Jew has done. How dare they tell the African Jew that they can't come? And so I know you said you're working with them, and it's just a, to me. I think this is really just a continued struggle. Uh, it's a great struggle, the, bro. It's a great struggle, and it's not going to dissipate anytime soon. The the best thing we can do is continue to strengthen ourselves with brotherhood, uh, with divine conversation, with study and to understand exactly what can we do. Uh, we need to travel to Ethiopia physically. We need to travel to Israel physically. You know, we need to sit with the brothers and the sisters and, and, and engage in a real conversation, you know, and uh, sit and eat food together and, and help figure it out because it's a great struggle. It's, it's not an overnight struggle. It's a very long struggle. Um, Israel, Jerusalem, been under siege for thousands of years. You That's know what I'm true. saying? I mean, yeah. that's just reality. <laughs> so all of a sudden, you got the so-called Negro back at Jerusalem. What's up with that? <laughs> you know, it's our presence. We shaking it up a certain kind of way, and uh, so so much so that we had sent ambassador an ambassador to Ethiopia in 1971. Rabbi Ben Ami, uh, the great wise master teacher, he sent an ambassador to uh, Ethiopia in 71, and he in 
the uh, ambassador who spoke to them invited them to Jerusalem, to Israel, to be with us. They said, it's time to come wow. home. You know what they come said on. to him? Mom, what? mom, man, you do it. It ain't time for us to come hang out with y'all. They were scared because it wasn't, oh, you know wow. what I'm saying? We didn't come through the Israeli government at that time because we, the kingdom government is not the same as the Israeli government. It's different, but we have we have we work with each other. You hear what I'm saying? Understood, understood. Yeah. So, so now, so that break. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So what happened in the history of the kingdom? We got on jam back in the in the mid '80s. We got arrested for various things. We got deported for various things. We got arrested in Israel, arrested in America, and it was a great move by the governments of the USA government, of the Israeli government, to remove us from the land of Israel. In the mid-70s, like 85, 85, 84, the article came out in the newspaper said that we was worse than the PLO from wow. Israel. The Israel the Israeli ministry wow. said that. I don't know if you ever heard of that before. No, I didn't. No, I did not. No. Okay. No, that article came out. Yeah. Dove Shalansky was the... Uh, Minister of in Israel, which his title I don't know, but his name was Dov Shalansky. I remember that much. So he said he was worse than the PLO. So he mm. said that man, we went on big alert for you know to protect ourselves from the drama. Absolutely. But they arrested yeah. us. We've been through all kind of stuff, and uh, it was a great struggle. From that point on, uh, matter of fact, we rallied uh, the Nation of Islam, the uh, Warthi Muhammad. All of them was gathered up. We did a press conference, big press conference in Chicago on that to promote, to secure, help secure our people, you know, all That's over right. the world. And uh, in light of that, we also did a thing, a great coalition at that time with the uh, uh, black nationalist community. We had a thing called Pan-African Week because we're scheduled for August of 85. But, man, we never made it happen because people got arrested. You know, various things took place. We went to, people went to jail. Right. People went all over the world. I was in Liberia. Things were jumping off. Then in Israel, 86, they reported about 50 saints out of, Liberia, wow. out of Israel. Because, you know, we were in Israel. Uh, they wouldn't give us, uh, you know, traditional rights of someone who would be allowed to come to Israel. So we had to squeeze people in the land of Israel. Um, mm. You hear what I'm saying? What they call illegal yeah. aliens, what they call it Mexico in America, right? Illegal aliens. Yeah, right. So we were, some of right. us were considered illegal aliens in the land of Israel. And they deported wow. us. We've been through stuff. Saints was jailed. You know, I mean, we got stories. Saints got stories like uh, like Winnie Mandela yeah. and stuff like that right. kind of stories. I mean, in real well, life terms. Good. This is good information because this is a history I'm not familiar with, and that's why we have to have dialogue because um, there's a couple of things that a lot of the diaspora of the young community uh, doesn't realize. So, so let me give you an example. I read uh, before before I got you on the interview, I read the the particular uh, thing from the uh, um, MFC 46. You, you're familiar with that? Yes, major from, piece of work. Yeah, Thank you for saying. Absolutely. Thank you for teaching that. Right, and and see what people don't realize, and that's why I spoke about it at the New Black Panther Party tribute to Dr. Khaled. Over the last decade, and even longer than that, what the enemy of freedom, justice, and equality, the enemy of peace, has been doing, they they say in their secret quarters, just like you know, that they can't defeat the spirit of of, of someone like a, a Rabbi Ben Ami. They can't defeat the spirit of the great leaders like Elijah Muhammad or any of those who are working towards. So they said the best way to do it is to neutralize and cause disunity amongst themselves and within each organization. Have right. you noticed uh, any of that government infiltration inside uh, the Hebrew Israelites? I mean, we've had some challenges. We've had some challenges, but uh, above all, no, no. And uh, we do our best to maintain a, a, high, a high protocol and things like that. People, you know, moving out, out the crazy kind of way, we, we eyes on everybody all the time <laughs> and gotcha, each other gotcha, all the understood. time to make sure everybody walking and moving how they're supposed to move and walk. You know what I'm saying? Understood. But, uh, understood. Fundamentally, understood. Uh, we move by the Holy Spirit, and there have been agents, quote, unquote, who have been in the land of Israel who had confessed and said, hey, man, uh, with the FBI, with the CIA, they realized that truth was most was a more superior reality, 
Right. Um, I, I do know that I have heard that uh, more than one time, I don't know how many times, at least one or two times, that someone who was an agent was in Israel and went on and confessed, hey, listen, hey, man, I'm with the government, you know, this is what's up. And at the same time, wow. some people had turned uh, against us and went to the FBI and said stuff against us. I'm just Absolutely. saying that has happened. That has happened. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, that that did happen. And uh, yeah, you know, but yeah. you know, and we it, overcome all things. You know what I'm saying? Well, you're right. And if I may add on to that, um, what you're what you're talking about, and and of course, I got files on top of files from the Freedom of Information Act about the see the COINTELPRO. I got about okay. twenty thousand files on what they did just during the uh, the forties through the seventies. And wow. I had an opportunity. I had an opportunity uh, a couple of weeks ago because my, my wife would tell you, I spend a lot of my evenings and stuff just reading these documents just to get into the understanding of what the government has been doing, so we can prevent a lot. We of it. need you to well, keep doing that. That's so valuable. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, beloved. Well, thank, thank you, and and thank, thank you, thank you. I'm going to continue to fight this fight as long as I got breath in my life, and even afterward, I'm going to continue to fight. And 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 the, what I found out, brother My, uh, Mikhail, is that what you just described is exactly what they do. They said, and particularly about my my my, my brothers and sisters in the Nation of Islam, they said the FBI that the people who are disgruntled, I'll never forget reading that in the FBI file. Yeah. They're looking for disgruntled former believers or people who are in the group who are disgruntled. Those are the ones they go after, and they said, "Hey, look, we want information. We want that." You know, we want right. this, and we want to, we want to send yeah. them back in. And and I echo what you just said because the, the honorable Miss Louis Farrakhan told us in the FOI about I think it was two thousand one, two thousand two. I was in a meeting, and the minister was speaking, and he was talking about a brother at that point who was in Phoenix Mosque, our mosque okay. we have in Phoenix, and he had a family that was an FBI family, and and nobody knew wow. what that meant, so he. He said that the little baby they had was a, was a government baby. The wife they gave him was a government uh, wife, and he Heavy. himself was a government agent. Heavy. They did all of that, and he said he said the brother stopped coming, so the, the brothers went and, and naturally said, hey, what's wrong with the brother? So he yeah. confessed just like what you said. He confessed wow. and said, hey, look, you know, uh, there's nothing but love up in here, so I can't do this anymore. Right. You exactly. Know. He said none of this is real. Exactly. He said and I, and I was asking my wife, I was like, how the heck did they get a government baby? And she said, well, what do you think? You know, they can get all these foster children and all buy that them. and just give one. And, and buy them. Right. And they buy Cost them. a couple right. pennies, man. <laughs> so Crazy this is the idea, level man. of infiltration. Yeah, this is the level of infiltration they'll have. And the thing they're afraid of is this kind of conversation. They're afraid of our unity. And so so I want, I want to, that brings me to the second part of my question. Sure. My question about it. And that has to do with the terms, um, and I, I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm asking for an education. What's the difference between an Israelite, a Jew, and a Hebrew in terminology? One, two, three. Israelite from the name Israel. The name Israel came from the name Jacob. In Hebrew, Yaakov. Yaakov was a brother in the Bible. He had four wives. He had thirteen children. Twelve sons became the twelve tribes of Israel. He had a wrestling match with himself, or, the, or, the, or his higher self and lower self. He overcame himself, and his name was changed from Yaakov to Israel, which may, Israel means uh, Israel means a prince who has power with God and with man. So his in that in that in that level of consciousness, he became another person. He overcame his lower self with his higher self, Israel. Okay. So he's no longer called Yaakov, the supplanter. Okay? So, and then the term Hebrew is another, uh, is the term in Hebrew, it, it, Ivri, it means uh, someone who crossed over from the, from, the, from, the, from, the, from the Eber or Ever, one who crossed over from the Euphrates, crossed over the river, from the Euphrates going west. So when Abraham crossed over, they call him a Hebrew. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You got you there? Yes, sir. I'm right Are you here. there? Okay. Yeah, can you yeah, hear me? So I, can, I can hear you. The term, yes, the term Hebrew refers to, Ivri means one who has crossed over. Okay, physically crossed over, but 
in the light of the kingdom age, we refer to it also not just physical but spiritually. It's when you cross over from a lower understanding to a higher understanding. Like right. many of us, you know, we did whatever we used to do, and now we're doing some higher level, high level activities. You know, right. high level activities. So, uh, Hebrew, Israelite, and Jew. The term Jew comes from the the cornerstone, which is Judah in Hebrew, Yehuda. Judah was one of the sons of Israel, and in particular, that's the that's the quote unquote royal tribe. That's the tribe that gave birth to uh, the Mashiach, David. Or David, Melech David, King David, and then from his lineage, it goes on to say that uh, King Solomon came. Later on in history, Haile Selassie came. You know, the royal seed. Many of us are scattered throughout the world. Uh, a quick dip in history. Uh, Benin, West Africa. There's a whole tribe of people known as the tribe of Judah in the, in the country called Benin, and okay. um, they were known as the Waida tribe. The Wai Da tribe, hmm. and then the uh, in the French language, We Da. And okay. in Hebrew, we say Yehuda. But that tribe was part of Judah scattered. And in the 17th, 18th century, the entire tribe was taken out of the out of the country. The entire tribe hmm. was removed to the captivity. They're in Brazil. They're in Haiti. They're in Chicago, Mississippi, Louisiana. Boom, boom, boom. I was blessed. 10, 11, 12 years ago to be in Benin, 2019. That was a while back. So I was there yeah. for three weeks, and I went to something called the Reconciliation Festival where the country of Benin apologizes to the diaspora for the captivity because some of them were in collusion with the European governments, French, the British, right. the, the, you know, the Portuguese, the Dutch, you know, for all of that. All that drama. So uh, right. while I was there, uh, I learned about this people, Waida. And I talked hmm. to my uh, the translator and tour guide by the name Constantine David, awesome spirit. He was based in D.C., he's awesome spirit. And he told me, he said, man, I see anybody here still speak that language they used to speak? He said, man, the whole people is gone. I said, the whole people is gone. Wow. took me about... Five minutes to realize I'm one of those people. <laughs> wow, man. I'm like, so my people are Louisiana. You know, I'm like, because, you know, the French, the French all up in Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. The struggle's right. been great, man. You know, and and and, well, and our responsibility now is to let's re- return to our heritage and get strengthened. Open up the book of Genesis. You know what I'm saying? Get some strength in Genesis. Learn about the Shabbat. Right. You know, get some strength in that. Learn about some vegetation and some fruit. Learn about brotherhood right. and sisterhood. Get some of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yes, yeah, sir. man, we need all we can get, man, because we on, we on, we under a lot of pressure in America and in the, the whole well, diaspora. I, I want to read a I want to read a quick section that is right on top, right on cue from the book that I purchased a while back called God, the Black Man and Truth by Rabbi Ben Ami. And major he, writing, he, major he, writing. Absolutely it is. And he talks specifically to what you're just saying on page 98, brothers and sisters. For those who uh, need to buy this book, visit Soul Vegetarian 1 or 2 in the West End or in North Highland uh, Boulevard over in Atlanta. God, the Black Man and Truth by Ben Ami, A-M-M-I. Page 98, he says specifically, a good example of one who had to separate himself from a pagan society was Lot, who dwelled in Sodom and Gomorrah. He had to come out. Two must come out. You must totally denounce this world and dedicate yourself to the building of a new world order, where men wow. who are governed by God govern the world, wherein we will live according to the will of God and live in harmony with his creation. And then two wow. paragraphs down. Two paragraphs down, he says, Today, you, black America, have interwoven yourselves into the fabric of Euro-American society, much to your own distress, while at the same time as you view the state of our race, realize that you have fallen so far away from God. Therefore, the deceptions and fantasies of being a part of the white man's world must cease 
to be the vision of our people who have been culturally robbed and trapped on the shores of immorality under the yoke of material and economic persecution by the pagan oppressors. Black people right. must, must stop fantasizing about Gabriel's horn blowing on Judgment Day and chariots of fire coming to carry them home after they have partaken and enjoyed all of this world to the last drop. Black people, <clears throat> you must hear the trumpet of truth. You must return to the, cre- the God of creation. You must worship him and him only and love him with all your heart, soul, and might. That, when I read that a while back, when I first got this book, I said, this is the plain truth. So that brings me to the, to the, to the subject that we've been talking about on Nat Turner Library Radio Show for some time now, um, mm-hmm. the, the term Semite. And the European Jew... Uh, using the term Semite as a lightning rod and a weapon against black people uh, anywhere in the world that they don't like or anybody that they don't like. So, Brother Mi- Brother Mikael, give me just one moment. I want to play a quick little one-minute one clip from former Israeli uh, uh, minister Shulamit Aloni. She was on a, a radio show uh, some years ago describing the term anti-Semite and how they use it as a trick. So I just want to set the stage for this talk, and then I want to ask you about this term. Okay, so hold on just a second. Brothers and sisters, this is Shulamit Aloni. Some of you may have heard this before. She's a former Israeli minister, and she's describing in an interview how the Israeli um, white Jew uses this as a trick. Um, Often when there is dissent expressed in the United States against policies of the Israeli government, um, uh, people here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. When from Europe somebody is criticizing Israel, then we bring up the Holocaust. When in this country people are criticizing Israel, then they are anti-Semitic. And the organization is strong and has a lot of money. And the the ties between uh, Israel and the American Jewish establishment are very strong and they are strong in this country. As you know, uh, they have power, which it's okay, they are talented people and they have power, money and uh, media and other things. And their attitude is Israel, my country, right or wrong, the identification and they are not ready to hear criticism and it's very easy to blame people who criticize certain acts of the Israeli government as anti-Semitics and to bring up the Holocaust and the suffering of the Jewish people and that's, that justify everything we do to the Palestinians. Well, right. That was Shulamit Aloni. Uh, and so, Brother Mikhail, what's your response, or I should say, what's your comment on that clip I just played? Well, my comment about that is that the, um, you know, people get criticized all over the world. Um, right. Personally, nationally, I mean, people get criticized. Uh, even the, even being born in this country, my birth certificate said Negro. And even though I didn't know what it meant until later on, I was being criticized, didn't even know it. <laughs> Right, right, right. So, right. you know, it's like, like, like we said earlier, studying, studying terminology. The term Semitic or Sim, that comes from Shem, the son of Noah, you know. And the Israelis are able to use the term simply because they're in the land of Israel. So they can wield it because they're wielding it from the land of Israel. You know what I'm saying? So they, I mean, right. the power to defend, have it put into their hands on that level. You know, I mean, they, mm. they can say it. They're in Israel, they can say it. Um we can say it too. Instead of saying racism, we can just say people are being anti-Semitic to to us. We can say the term ourselves, so we know that we should. Ah. Uh, I'm just sharing uh, some, some, some some insight. You got know, you. Okay. people want to call us uh, racist. People call call us. We use the term racist in this in this country. Black American people. That's the term we always use. We can use anti-Semitic if we want mm. to, because we we from Shem. We're anti-Semitic. We want to take it to to a stronger root. If if we want to do that, but okay, you know, okay, I'm not, so 
I'm not throwing no eggs sure. at nobody, but I'm just saying. No, I know, I know. The, the, yeah. the, the terminology has to be reviewed and considered. Um, they use it to defend themselves, and it's understood. People need to defend themselves. You hurt my feelings, I want to defend myself. You know, I mean, that's life. You get hurt. If you feel get hurt, how do you defend yourself? Well, you got to use some terms. When I was a little boy, somebody called me the so-called N-word. What did I do? I stared them in their face and made them back down. That's what I did, and I kept walking. But what yeah. do you do when you, when you get offended? You know, you learn how to figure it out. You can't just right. fight somebody. So you got to use uh, intelligent terminology to disarm people so they won't be bothering you and messing with you. They still call us Negro. Uh, in black, right. black is a color. What happened to the nations that we used to represent? What happened to Cush? Uh, right. In the Greek term is Ethiopia. What happened to Cush? What happened to Kemet? What happened to Mitzrayim? You understand what happened to uh, uh, Ghana? You know, what happened to, uh, uh, um, uh, what's the term in Nigeria? Ebo. What happened to, yes, I mean, yes. the, terms are, the terms are legitimate. Yor- Yor- Yoruba, you know? Yoruba. Yeah, Yoruba, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, why da? You know, these terms are legitimate terms of a people that have been lost in captivity, and now we're black and we're Negro and we're colored and we all these kind of names, African-American. And, uh, hey, man, what's up with that? So we just saying as the children of Israel, as we waking up and returning back home, that we encourage all of us in the diaspora to get a grip on your identity, whether you say okay. you're a Moor, a Hebrew, a Jew, a Judah, uh, Israelite, get a grip on it, strengthen it, fellowship with your brothers and sisters, and come home and right. visit. Come to Israel. Come to Ghana. Okay. Come to Benin. Come to South America. Guyana, we in Guyana, South America. Come visit the saints in various locations and regenerate your spirit. Because in, in, in the North American captivity, we get degenerated every day, all day. TV, newspaper, crazy people. I mean, eating crazy. I mean, it's rough out here. We call America... Yeah. The lands of the great captivity. That's what we call mm. America. We call America Babylon from Revelation 18th chapter, and we call it the lands of the great captivity. And, and uh, one of the final, matter of fact, one of the final calls, relative relative terms, right, final call? One of the final yes, calls sir. of Rabbi ben Ami to the saints is we must return to the Edenic lands because when the Holy Spirit returned to the Edenic lands, our job is to regenerate. We generate ourselves, yeah, we generate the people there. You know, I, I, was, I lived in Liberia for three years, lived in Ghana, then in Benin. We have to return to these lands and regenerate our spirit and the people of the land. And they can never regenerate us, some of them, you know, learn yes, how sir. to yes, different cultural realities. It's the balance. It's, it's, it's um, um, eliminating NSC 46. Yes, sir. We destroy I NSC agree. 46 by getting a passport. Getting a passport. It's half the struggle. Get a passport, Absolutely. get your Absolutely. ticket, and go see your Absolutely. people. Arm well, and you arm. Know, and, and, and that's the spirit of my, my next point, because you bring up an excellent point, because I often speak to different uh, black leaders that I've interviewed. I spoke to a few months ago on, on the subject, and I just spoke to them last week, actually, Dr. Umar Infantude, also known as Dr. Umar Johnson, the great uh, psychologist, uh, child counselor. Right. He he told me a long time ago that he goes to Africa every so often to, you know, do do a do a, a lecture, of course. But he gets there, he goes there to regenerate. He said, and he right. said the, the spirit of the people, you know, in in East Africa, particularly in Ethiopia, is so different than here. I, I interviewed a sister from the Falasha uh, Jewish family uh, uh, a yeah. few years ago, and she told me that the spirit is so different. In in Ethiopia, and that they they're very peaceful people. That yes. when they come over to these other countries, including Israel itself, when they go there to visit, they're like it's just a different world altogether. They don't know anything about oh, yeah. strife and arguing and stuff like that. So I understand yeah. exactly what you mean about regenerate and get your spirit back. Oh so, yeah, so, and, so, and let me give so a I, quick point about Ethiopia. Yes, yes sir. I can do it. I can actually wait. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, okay. Sir. A quick point about Ethiopia in 80, 85, 86, the same time that the Israeli government and the CIA and the FBI was collusion against getting us locked up and deported and all that kind of stuff, the same time 
the CIA was responsible for getting the the uh, many Ethiopians to Israel. They mm. uh, engineered with Israelis a, a collusion between those governments to get the Ethiopians into the land of Israel, 85, 86. The same time they were jamming us in America and in Israel, locking us up, deporting us, these kind of things. And they right, literally, right. literally, the war is real. Um, they don't want us to be there, but but they understand that we're not going anywhere, and that uh, you know we're doing we're doing things and working together and developing another level of brotherhood in the land of Israel with the Israeli community. We're developing well, that, that being, as we speak, yes, sir. And, and with the African Palestinians. Now that that brings me to my my final point on that subject, and then uh, we're going to listen to some Rabbi Ben Ami. Uh, uh, Rabbi Ben Ami and how he talks uh, so positively about the nation of Islam and uh, I want you to share your own personal story. You had mentioned several times in this interview that there's uh, communities around the world for the Hebrew Israelite community and that we have the go-ahead to go visit. Now, I'm just yeah. a regular old black man in North America. My first question, I'm going to speak for everybody that's listening, how do we do that? What's, we, get our, we get our passport, then what do we do? Get your passport and come to the West End, and uh, come to the off, come to the West End, come to the office, and introduce yourself, and uh, and uh, we get a conversation about where would you like to travel to according to your interest, and according to your skill set, you might want to take a week, a month, or however you want to travel, and then we can uh, get a real conversation. Prince Ram is there; he has the international staff there, uh, who is internationally traveled, can assist you in any way you want to go, literally. Beautiful. Just that simple. Now that's Just good that to we have, have class family. every week. We have, we have class in uh, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. called School of the Prophets. We have school okay. called Breath of Life every uh, Shabbat, Saturday, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, every week. And in between that, you can come any, ta- any day in the week we open. Our hours are 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. And most of the saints there, somebody has international experience in most cases that's available for a real conversation. All the saints are required okay, to have a passport, and most all of us have traveled at least to Israel. Not everybody that works at the restaurant, but at least someone on staff, in most cases, has traveled to Ghana, Israel, Kenya, South Africa, somewhere, all the time. That's how we, okay, that's gotcha. what we do. And we have communities so now, there in place. Indigenous, indigenous. matter of fact, the, large, the fastest growing community in our, in, in our community is in South Africa. The young people in hmm. South Africa raising up so fast, man, it's like, <laughs> you see 10, mm. you look next, you see 20, 30 people. It's like that. Wow. We grow in, okay. and we have conferences. We we active, man. We got scholarship. Man, listen, I was in oh, South Africa sure. three years ago. I heard a brother pray. I heard a brother pray in South Africa, man. This brother prayed, and I was sure something to come out the sky. This brother prayed mm. like he was one of the brothers with, with Abraham with and when they, get, get, when, they went to, when they went to get Lot out of uh, yes, out of Sodom and Gomorrah, yes, their brother sir. prayed like that. And I've been wow. around 40 years. I heard some praying. He sounded like that. He's a wow. young son, 22 years old in South Africa. I'm just saying the spirit of truth is moving, man. It's moving strong and very Absolutely. fast. Absolutely. Very fast. So I recommend. He, Hebrew, Hebrew yeah. is one of those essential languages that. If you black and you on the planet Earth, you got to know certain languages. The number one language to learn, I would have to say, if you're going to study scripture, you got to know Hebrew. You got to know, know Hebrew. You got to know, know Hebrew something. because you know yeah, you do. You got to know Arabic and you got to know Hebrew with your cousin or sister and brother languages. That's right. Because That's right. They're, they're mathematically precise and it, it they are the language of God Himself. Hey now, hey now, talk about it. People, people don't understand that. People don't understand. I have that. a movie. I have a movie from the mid seventies with Robbie Ben Ami speaking Hebrew. It's about four people speaking Hebrew on this on this DVD I have, right? But when he yes, speaks sir. it, it sounds it's a whole nother level. It's a whole nother level. Yes, sir. You gotta say, yes, I show sir. it to you, man. I mean, you hear no, the other people speaking Hebrew, and and I'm like, and his sister speaking Hebrew, like powerful, right? But when he speaks the Hebrew. It's another level. I'm just letting well, you, know. you know, and he trained scholars. He trained the priesthood. He trained the variety of all the scholars in Israel. 
Man, the saints in Israel got a lot of strength. Well, what we're going to do... That's out here, but the saints in Israel, they got extra strength. Yes, I'm just letting you know. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's the Holy yeah, Land. Awful. So what yeah, we're going to do was we're, we're going to play a little bit uh, from Brother Rabbi Ben Ami when he spoke in 1993 uh, at um, Mas Mariam. And then we're going to come back and close out the show with a few minutes, and then we can tell the people again how they can visit the uh, Hebrew Israelite family and where they can purchase the books and all everything we talked about. So hold tight. Here's our brother. May Allah be pleased with him. Brother Rabbi Ben Ami. First, I would like to give all honor and praises and thanks to the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The great, mighty, and benevolent God, which has blessed us in this dispensation of time by bringing us back from the land of the captivity and allowing us to tread upon that great and holy land of ours. I greet you in peace. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks and appreciation the Honorable Minister Farrakhan for this invitation to come into this holy habitation and to share these moments with you. I am thankful and I am grateful. I want to also mention I was listening to the Honorable Minister Farrakhan give the date of November 1977 when he stood to affirm that he was going to move for the rebirth of the nation of Islam. It was in October of 1977 that the Kingdom of God was hurled in its glory. The new birth of the redemptive struggle in the Holy Land was in October of 1977. That's not a coincidence. Mm. And uh, he was making a similar stand here in this land of the captivity in November of 1977. I've chosen to speak unto you today about spirituality and destiny. Brothers and sisters, wherever we are on this planet as a people today, we're losing. We're losing in the Caribbean. We're losing in South America. We're losing in Africa. We're losing in America. And except that we show some resistance as a people and halt this onslaught against our people, you can rest assured that from the losses that we are accumulating, the final decisions will be taken for our annihilation off of this planet. You're right. I'm trying to scare you. But it says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So I want you to understand that someone has made you very comfortable in the midst of all of this. And I'm not an entertainer. I'm not here to make you comfortable. I'm here to arouse you. And to arouse your concern to what is taking place around you. Because you see, you have to understand that it is a different view that you get when you're up on the watchtower and when you're opening the front door down on the first floor. You see, you open the door on the first floor and you look out and you don't see nothing. But we're up on the watchtower and we see a long ways away. So you have to listen to those that can see a little bit further than what you see at the front door. So, we see these things closing in on us as a people. And I'm concerned because you're too comfortable. I'm concerned because you're not showing any resistance to what is taking place. So I'm going
going to touch upon spirituality and destiny and a little bit about laws of relativity. Laws of relativity are unseen laws that are out there. They're not written anywhere, but they govern the lives of men and women. One of those laws was referred to by Jesus when he said, where a man stores his treasures, there will his heart be also. What did he mean by that? Because the adversary is very, very cunning. He said, where a man stores his treasures, there will his heart be also. That means that wherever you can attain the things that you treasure, there will your heart be. So you see, the adversary then knows that you can only speak the things that are in your heart because it's a relative law that governs the things that you can speak. Higher education, first of all, has to teach you your relationship and your place in the plan of God. That's how higher education begins. To teach you your place in the plan and the will of God. Higher education will teach you how to walk. How to talk, how to dress, how to eat, how to relate to your woman, your man, your children. Look out in the streets today and tell me where are your high educated African Americans? The man is gone. The woman is gone. The children are gone. The neighborhood is gone. And you walking around talking about you got a higher education. Everything in our race is gone. And you present me your diploma. Says, Jesus said, by the fruit you would know them. Higher education. Let me explain that to you. But you understand. A heart surgeon that can perform a triple bypass operation, you know, a surgeon that can perform a heart transplant, he's a sur surgical genius. He's a surgical genius. But now, the institution that trained him has trained a surgical genius to be able to perform a heart transplant. But which institution is the greatest? The institution that trained him to perform a heart transplant or the institution that trained you how to keep your heart? Which is the greatest institution? Isn't the greatest institution the institution that trained you how to keep your heart? Is that the greatest institution? Let us consider. Now I said that to perform a heart transplant, he's a surgical genius. Then what do we call those that teach you how to keep your heart and not need a heart transplant? High, which is higher education? Which of those institutions Instructors should receive the highest salary. Which one would you prefer to attend? So that you could understand the institution whose instructors can teach you how to keep your heart, they ought to have the pay increase. They are the greatest instructors. Now, and we go further. They perform brain surgery. Brain surgery, to perform brain surgery, you've got to be a surgical genius. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there are no greater brain surgeons than men of God. The greatest brain surgeons 
are men of God. No greater brain surgeons than men of God. Then what do you call them that cannot even need a laser and that can go in and take out and put a whole new brain in while you standing there not sedated before them? Which is the greatest institution? to be reborn again. You've got to be taught how to find those that have high dedication. Because in former times, it wasn't called education, it was called dedication. Because you started on the path of dedicating your lives unto God. And it was high dedication. Do you know any greater brain surgeons than men of God. They don't need no lasers. Hey, they can transform, they can go in there and pull out that old piece of rubber, grab that sponge out of there and cast it aside hey, and put a whole new brain up there in your mind. Now, if I said that the brain surgeon is a surgical genius, then I, there are no words to explain what men of God are and the institutions that train them. That's high dedication. But because you don't understand, you go to the laser beam brain surgeon. And when they get through with you, they tell you you're going to be crippled for life. <laughs> they tell you that, well, you may get another year. And here we tell you that, come by here. We'll give you a whole new brain. Won't be nothing wrong with you. And you live forever and you still go. Well, that says something is wrong with you. Something that you don't understand. Seems like you all ought to be standing out in front of the minister's office day and night. Telling him, I heard that you... We're a master brain surgeon. Put it to the test. No greater brain surgeons than men of God. And then certainly we know if they've worked on y'all's brains, I mean, we know that they're well qualified if they've... And, <laughs> well. All right, brothers and sisters, that was Brother Rabbi Ben Ami Ben Israel. May Allah be pleased with him. Um, he was speaking the truth about our condition in North America and the necessity to change our minds and our brains. Brother Mikael, you still there, sir? Wow. That was wonderful. Yes, it was. That's What's your rich. comment on that? <laughs> we. Man, play it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did one better. I Brothers and sisters that are listening, yeah, but if you're listening all... I got the whole link to that on for, for the wow. YouTube link for the brother who uploaded the entire lecture that Brother Rabbi Ben Ami gave. Yeah. Is on the YouTube page on Nocturnal Library Radio, so the whole thing is there. So, yeah. so that beautiful wow. relationship between the Nation of Islam and Brother Rabbi Ben Ami and the Hebrew Israelites. Um, I just want you to take. We got about six minutes before we got to close our show. Give me about three minutes of what you know of the history and the relationship that you know we've had. I can tell you, eighty-five Chicago. Cold as ice, 85 below zero with the wind chill factor. I was there, Savior's Day. Didn't make it. I was at the restaurant, so vegetarian, feeding the people. But I know we sent a DVD, we sent a video from Israel that was played at Savior's Day, 85. And uh, the title of it is uh, Spiritual Arms Manufacturers. <laughs> and uh, the uh, Holy King, Ben Ami, Gave, Rabbi Ben Ami gave a presentation. He gave respect and honor to Minister Farrakhan. He mentioned a uh, brother by the name of Omari Obadele. And he also mentioned uh, our ambassador at that time, that these were men in the field, uh, in the midst of the people, teaching and encouraging us to 
get our spiritual armaments together. Um, Amario Badeli was the president of the Republic of New Africa, which I was a part of back in my college days for a short period of time. Yes, and uh, just the spirit of understanding the need to unite. Nationalism simply means unite. You want to have a nation of your own. And so we were all merging. Matter of fact, 84 in Chicago, I was there uh, at the uh, Divine Universal Brotherhood Conference that featured uh, our leadership in the Hebrew Israel community at that time in Chicago and from Israel, uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan and the saints there in the community, uh, Final Call Building, and also the uh, people involved with the Republic of New Africa and other "Quote unquote national, so-called black nationalist communities uniting, yes, sharing, fellowshipping, bridging, and and growing as a people. But like I say, uh, by '85, we ran into some uh, some complications with the government. Uh, you know, they had some us went to jail. Some things happened. Some things had, took place. Deported in Israel. We had some challenges, but uh, we're still together. We figuring it out and. Uh, I want to share yes, a term that you might not be familiar with, but, um, you know, the term black nationalist is a, it's a popular term, but we we can honestly say that we are spiritual nationalists. That's a term that's, uh, I would say for us, the Hebrew Israelites, that's a more relative term for us who are, are in Israel. Now, there are other Israelites throughout America today, they might not understand their terminology, but we, having established uh, the kingdom of Yah, Yahweh, in the land of Israel, we represent another level of spirit and energy for our people. And uh, we represent that unifying factor, you know, so that Jerusalem would become a city of peace, as it's prophesied to be. And Jerusalem yes, is referring to a people, not just a city with some walls. And in Hebrew, yes, it's called Yerushalayim, and it means the inheritance of perfection. So that's the goal, is that as the saints come up out of the great captivity, that we would have a spirit to unite and manifest the city of truth in Israel. And that's why we're there, you know. We're, that's well, why I, we're in the I, land of Israel, to generate truth back into that land, in the promised land. I got a question, and then I'm going to give you another 30 seconds before we can close out. Is, sure. Are there Hebrew are there Hebrew uh, language classes at the uh, temple? Yes, we can get you to a private tutor. We have a variety of saints from us who can get you some private tutoring. It's, it, we can make that arrangement. It's not hard to do. We can make it happen. Beautiful, beautiful. There's a variety of well, saints from well, Israel raised there, know the language upside down, inside out. You can help a brother out. It's not a problem. And, brother and a, a quick, I, I'm going to give you yes, a quick sir. one, though. In, in the so-called Bible, Psalm 119, in most Bibles, Psalm 119 has every uh, has all 22 of the alphabet in it to begin to learn the kind, the language, how the how the words, the modern letters look. You can look in the Psalm 119 and get the uh, the actual letters in most of the Bibles in this country. Psalm 119, okay. you can see the the 22 lineup, and we can also teach the ancient Hebrew in all of that. It's all relative. Our matter of fact, our seal, the kingdom seal, is a lamb and a lion. Surrounded by the ancient Hebrew letters, uh, referring to peace, justice, truth, mercy, love, and Shabbat. So we can we can teach all the good stuff. Beautiful, brother brother Mikael. I want to thank Allah. I want to thank Yahweh. I want to thank you for your time with us. This would not be a one time thing. We'll get you back on in the future. Yeah. Uh, because I we want to continue this beautiful relationship here at Nat Turner Library Radio Show with the Hebrew Israelite family. Yes. A very important part of the nationalist, the, the black movement in America and the world. I want right. to thank you for your time with us uh, tonight. It's been well spent. Uh, you got ten seconds for for mm -hmm. um, final comment. Just ten seconds. What you have for us? Ten seconds. Next time we get on board, you and I, we're gonna talk about how the Soul Vegetarian Restaurant was started back in seventy eight, seventy nine. How It'll another be sooner than you think. Yes, gave sir. their community to us in Israel. Powerful history. Well, we, we'll get, thank you, we'll get you back in. Well, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Uh, may Allah continue to bless you. 
and uh, Shalom uh, Hallelujah. Uh, and uh, we want to get you back on sooner than later. Brothers and sisters, that was Brother Mikael, the saint from the Hebrew Israelite community. And uh, next week, we got our sister, uh, sister who was on before, Sister Dr. Cynthia McKinney, to talk about the Israeli lobby, cool manipulation of the black community. You are listening to the Nat Turner Library Radio Show. Salam alaikum, family. Ah.